We want to talk about probability. So first and foremost, let's talk about um, some notation when we deal with probability. Notation. So capital A, B, capital letters are representing events, outcomes, okay? Um, P is your probability, prob. And if I say, you know, P of A, I want you to realize this is almost like function notation because of the way I say it. P of A, it's not P time. It's not P times A, it's P of A. That's how I say it out loud. And P of A represents the probability that event A occurs out of whatever procedure I'm dealing with. Okay, the probability that event A occurs. And, you know, in general, I'm just going to very simplify it. Um, I'm sure you guys already know how to do this. I'll show you examples. But to, to calculate it, you're going to take the number of ways that A occurs and then divide by your total number of simple events, which is like the number of values or the number of things or outcomes in your sample space. Okay. Okay, so does that make sense? So <clears throat> let's say that I, let's go back here from this sample space using this example. Three births. These are all the outcomes. I'm not always going to list all the outcomes. We're going to calculate probability in other ways also. But let's say I define event A to B, and I'm not going to always do this either. I define event A to B <clears throat> going through three births, randomly selecting out of that sample space, or randomly getting exactly two girls. And I want the probability that event A occurs. So I want to calculate that. So I'm defining event A to be that I'm randomly selecting the cases that have exactly two girls or, you know, the outcome being two girls. And again, in this case, I'm representing all the possible ways that that can happen. I want the probability of that. So I'm going to divide. In my numerator, how many ways can I get two girls? Well, exactly two girls. Well, I can get two girls this way, where I get them at the end. I can get it this way, where I get it at the beginning and the end. Um, and I can get it this way, where I get them first and then a boy. So I have three different ways that that can happen. So there are three different ways that I can get or event A can occur out of the total um, number of um, events, which in this case, no, from my sample space, which in this case is eight. So the probability of randomly selecting or randomly getting exactly two girls from this type of procedure is 3 over 8. So obviously I could represent a probability in fraction form. Now every fraction can be represented also as a decimal. So if I take 3 and divide by 8, I get 0.375. And typically, so 0 0.375 also represents the probability of this particular event happening. Now, not only can I represent it in fraction form and decimal form, but I can also convert it, because you've heard it, in percentage form. 37.5% chance of this happening, you know, randomly, if, you know, that was my procedure and each birth is only a boy or a girl. There's a 37.5% chance of me getting two girls, whatever order, um, they could come first or last or whatever, but... Um, 37.5% chance of that happening. So you can see that probability can be represented as a fraction, as a decimal, or as a percentage. Um, now, from this, let me add to this, just based on this. Um, I want you guys to think about, you know, restrictions, requirements for probability. Like, if I want to represent P of A, let's say not for this example, in general, what are the limitations to what this value can hold? Since it's a fraction, right? And if you imagine, do you think that the numerator could ever be bigger than the denominator based on what this represents? I mean, I'll never get more than the sample space. I'll never get more than eight outcomes for this particular procedure. So no matter what probability I'm asking for, the numerator can never be bigger than the denominator. The most it could be is eight. It can never be more than that. So the probability of any event, um, let me uh, actually rewrite this, has to be less than or equal to 1. 
or less than or equal to 100%, right? We don't really typically say there's a probability of 110% of something happening. It doesn't make sense. That is the maximum value that it can hold. What's the minimum value that it can hold? Well, what if I ask you, um, let's say my event instead of this was randomly selecting exactly uh, four girls. Well, that's never going to happen, right? Because I'm only having three births and I'm only saying per birth, I only have two children, either boy or girl. So that, that out of my sample space, there's no such thing as four girls. So I would say that the probability of that happening, I would have zero outcomes for that out of eight. Well, zero over eight is zero. So the smallest value that a probability can hold is zero. So everything in decimal form has to be between zero and one inclusive. Everything in obviously percentage form has to be between zero percent and 100 percent inclusive because it could be zero or 100. But what if it is um, 100? You know, if I ask you, and somebody can answer this, the probability of something happening is 100%. What does that mean to you? The probability of something happening is 100%. What does that mean? What does that mean to you? To me, if you tell me that, it's going to happen. We call that a certain event. It's going to happen. The probability that I'm sitting online talking about stats is 100% it's happening. That is a certain event. So if you have an event such that the probability is 100% or one, you call that a certain event. What do we, you know, what about the other side? What happens if I tell you the probability of something, something happening is zero or 0%? Zero what does that tell you about that case? But it won't happen. Not happening. We call that an impossible event. There's no such thing as not happening. It's impossible. That is an impossible event. Um, so does that